so for this this little project you're gonna need a few things um, a Raspberry Pi with the well this is the model 3 version B it's a few years old now but it does have the AV out cable and what this allows you to do is to take a, a four pole connector that has the video audio left and right output plug it in and you can put that into your telly um, there's a few gotchas it won't work this particular cable won't work out of the box because on the AV out for the Raspberry Pi um, the it's like the iPhone versus Android the bottom ping the bottom pin is ground um, on this and that is video um, you need to switch them around for them to actually work on the TV so we'll come on to that a bit later on but Raspberry Pi micro SD card and a few cables there is a way to do it without this cable with a standard three pin um, composite connector um, but you will need uh, well again it depends on what you've got around the house I had a, a, a headphone microphone splitter so we'll show you that later on but first let's just jump into a very simple setup for the Raspberry Pi and for this we're going to use the SD card we're going to plug it into a Windows 10 machine and we're just going to install uh, Raspbian so let's just do this now in a second you will want to put your micro SD card in your laptop and first things first if you well it's always good practice uh, right click on the SD card and the Windows machine just hit format and you'll want to do this as FAT32 um, give it a name if you want fine just hit start it will erase all the data on the disk, so I've <laughs> I burned the wrong image before. Um, but retropine it. Format complete, job done. Just blah, 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 close. Right, so the SD card is done. Uh, now we just need to burn the image to it. Uh, there's a couple of bits of software you can use. Um, well, Windows machines, Rufus is pretty good. It's fairly self explanatory. Point it at uh, an image, put in the, S put in the, um, the disk, and just hit start. That easy. Um, I use a Mac normally and I have Etcher installed so this is um, the Windows version of that Balana Etcher so um, just navigate to your favorite uh, image burning software install it run it and if you haven't already you also need to get the image for Raspberry Pi OS previously called Raspbian okay so easiest way is just literally Google Raspberry Pi download is the first one uh, you can't go wrong um, I'm just grabbing the box standard command line mini light interface because we don't need anything particularly fancy we just need um, it's a bare bones Linux distribution um, so download torrent or zip whichever is your preference uh, stick it somewhere you can find it I uh, put this in a local copies folder and Ras uh, Raspi OS Buster um, this will be um, is it is it file or WinRAR? Yeah, so best thing is just to install WinRAR because it can handle everything and then you're just going to uh, unzip it, unrar it, whatever you want to do, extract files here and OK so that should just create uh, a folder with the image that we're interested in, so it's 1.8 gigs the SD cards um, um, you normally want to yeah, keep it about 4 gigs you know, they can get a couple of quid these days um, I bought a whole bunch of uh, 32 gig SD cards for 20 pounds like five of them so um, they'll last me a little while but basically um, I load up your um, um, burning software why is it not working oh it's just very slow um, they're all slightly different flash from file navigate to your image double click select target which will be the mass storage device whatever yours is mounted as mine's the D drive micro SD card click select and flash and that'll be about 10 minutes there or thereabouts is it working starting doing something 
there we go so it's going to take a couple of minutes to burn it and probably just the same if not a bit more to validate it whilst it's doing that um, let's just go to the website of the, um, the software we're interested in now this is I've only really just come across this it's been around for a few years now a uh, chap called what's his name Peter do, 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 do. What is his surname? Peter Kwan, I believe one of the original engineers on the teletext service from the BBC years ago, um, has well, made this available. So there's a whole bunch of stuff you can um, read up on it. You can either run it, you can buy a device or make a device that will allow you to run the uh, teletext, um, I don't know what you call it, so if it's um, the hardware or the um, to overlay the overlay the, the PAL video signal with the with the data to be um, read by your TV but either you can overlay it with the, the PAL video or you can just uh, what we're doing here is basically just using the, the AV out from the Raspberry Pi just to inject the uh, the teletext service into it for this one to work you have to go to the AV channel that your composite video uh, input is coming in on and hit teletext I think it still works quite well if you just do a Google for I think if you do uh, teletext teletext um, GitHub Pi, Teletext GitHub Pi. Let's have a look. And uh, there's a couple of these, so we're going to use this one. So the second one, Peter KVT80. Go to VBit2, and they're very um, in the wiki. They have very kindly basically already built a script that you just need to run. So. Um, Basically, we just copy and paste this into the command line tool and run it. It's going to go and get the file and then, and then basically run the file. So if we just if we navigate to this particular file, this is the script that we're going to run. And so, okay, um, this is you, know, you can run this on literally a vanilla install of, of Raspberry OS, and it will just run. So we're going to update the system. Uh, make sure we've got Git subversion and dialog installed. Uh, we're going to clone. Um, oh, what was this one? The Raspberry Teletext. So it does use clones the Ali One Two Three Four um, repository. Okay, so that used Raspberry Teletext. Uh, okay, they're cool. And then um, we're going to be. I guess what's that said? That's just making some changes to boot config text. Change, okay, we're uncommenting SDTV um, system editor uh, in the config.txt. We're then going to download the um, Peter's repository uh, into the home directory and go navigate into the directory. We're then going to go and grab the latest version from his repository. I think it's at 2.14 of time of going live. Um, we're going to basically check that out from Git, the latest repository, and then compile it. Then a whole bunch of um, system update things to link. Yeah, that's done. Brilliant. Um, make a local directory and then run the configuration. So basically, once you've done this the first time, uh, vbit dash config is the tool that you need to rerun to stop the service, start the service or or amend it. So basically just this this script does everything we're interested in, which is which is really cool. So that's done. Fantastic. Close down this. So we're going to take that out. I'm going to just switch over to the SD card that we've just burnt. Do you call it burning? I don't know. Anyway. Manera burning room. Uh, okay, cool. Right, there we go. So you turn it on, and literally, Raspberry Pi login is the is the only thing that we're interested in. And these, I think the standard login is Pi, and then Raspberry. Excellent, fantastic. Here we go. So. Don't work in directory, we're in home pi. Excellent, cool. So this is not gonna work because I'm not gonna copy and paste this. I'm literally typing it out whole school. So I'm doing a W get, it's gonna grab a file. V bits to master get v bits to close things. 
What's that going to do? Here we go, cool. So it's literally walking through the script we just looked at. So I think we just, this is currently doing the app apps. So we'll do the app update. Installing git. Unpacking git. And some versions. So we're now doing this. It's going to do. I don't, know, I don't know what dialogue is, let's look at that one. So we're cloning this Raspberry Pi teletext from Ali1234. It's follow it's just following the script. We don't need to worry about the details. It's um it's pretty cool. Get rid of that. Doing all the updates. So it's Oh, it's, it's building the code now. So it's actually it's a C program. Is it a C program? What actually is it? It is a C++ program developed on Windows. TDM GCC64 compiler. Oh, well, like most things these days, we don't need to know how they work. Some very smart people have made it easy for us. So. This is now running the, the VBit2 configuration. Um, depending on what you want to have, you know, um, Spark, Chunky Text is pretty cool, that's got bamboos on it. But CFAX, install CFAX, um, then you want to install service again, and then you choose your area. You'll probably want, well, I'm in Yorkshire and Lynx, so uh, worldwide, probably useful for those people not in the UK. That will just go with worldwide, um, and then you can start the service. Good option to run though is just go into here and run a VBit at boot up. So hit space on that, enter. That's now set a, I don't know, some kind of system service, uh, and then all I have to do is start. So now, as you can see in the top left, hopefully that's picking it up. That is the teletext service being spit out on HDMI. Obviously it's, it's it's just additional data in the actual video stream. HDMI input to a TV will not be able, well, the teletext service doesn't work with that. So what we need to do is use the AV out. So we're going to switch back over to the camera and we don't need this anymore. We can basically, we can quit out of this. This is just running. So you could, you know, if we look in the directory here, uh, where, where are we? Uh, VBit2, go back a directory. So you've now basically got Raspberry Text and VBit2 in here. You can, um, within, is it known hosts? In VBit2, you have a known services. And so you can navigate to these and just look at the actual core code. So I'm guessing you can make up your own service and piss about with it, but um, the um, it, looks, it looks pretty complicated to me. Um, so I've not managed to mess. I've not messed around with it yet. But basically, these are the services. So I guess you can obviously you can figure this however you want. Just the script, um, and then oops, Windows, and then what else have we got in here? Nothing much else that I've found of interest. Apart from if you want to rerun the configuration, it's just dot forward slash ebits config. And then you can stop the service, remove the service. So here's the Pi, not running anymore. But what we need to do now is get the AV out um, set up so it goes into the telly. Now, if you've got one of these, if you have one of these cables, this is the one that you should have for the Raspberry Pi. It's a four pole tip ring ring sleeve. Now, um, to have a multimeter here. So the bottom one needs to be um, video out but as you can see the, the bottom one here is actually ground so what you need to do is the, the bottom two need to be reversed so that should be that needs to be ground where it's currently video out and if you've had iPhone and Android devices before you know that 
thread. I don't know the history of why, but they're reversed. So you need to have you need to somehow get ground and video to reverse themselves. Now you may have got a cable that does it. I've got one of these little adapters that basically moves. So here we go. We're just going to test the the bottom of the the four pole here that's going to go into the Raspberry Pi. It's currently ground. Okay, and we want it to be the middle. So that's currently ground. We want it to be the middle. Put this in. And we get the bottom one, and it's now the middle. So it's now in the right position. So plugging this into here would mean that this is actually the AV out that we want to capture the teletext signal game into the television. Now, that's great if you've got one of these cables. If you haven't got one of these cables, and you only have, say you've got an audio cable, it's not quite enough. You will still need something else. Now, you, again, you can, mileage may vary. You can probably mess about with various things. If you've got a uh, an iPhone, Android, and you also have one of these uh, devices that takes the um, the four pole and splits out into individual headphone and microphone inputs, then if you in the microphone port on the very bottom, and this now is oh, it's the white one. That is our video output. And now the second one here is, is ground. There we go. So I can use this and with this and put that in the, obviously you need a TV with a composite input. You'll probably see these, um, you might've got a SCART lead. In fact, you could probably, could you put it in a SCART lead adapter? You probably could. You just need to get this signal, this input, into the TV, whether it be in SCART, um, RC Composites, or directly into the RF input. I'm guessing you can like use a, a PlayStation, one of the PlayStation adapters that converts this into RF input to the telly. Anyway, so that is that's, that's pretty much it. All we need to do now is just plug this into the to the TV and show you what it looks like. So let's just go and do that. The power is connected to the TV. Um, we're on input AV. Hopefully this, you can see this okay on, the, it's on my iPhone. Um, but no, it's just, you know, we just leave the Raspberry Pi running and hit the Teletext button. And that's the CFAX service we've just installed. It's Sunday night, half eight, and red button, all I'm doing, hitting the remote control, and here we go, depressing news, top stories, headlines, main menu, don't think there's bamboozle on this one, but again, mess around with the services, entertainment was 500. Top entertainment stories, page up, channel up, 501. Strictly, oh wow. Yeah. What a week. Anyway, enjoy the Teletext service on your Raspberry Pi. I think if you bundle this up, this this might make a really good Christmas gift. Um, because obviously you, you, most people will be just watching Sky and HDMI, but you know it's not too not too hard to hit the source button, um, change it from HDMI. So if I was on source, Scott, would Teletext work? No, it wouldn't work. Okay, cool. So you do need to be on the AV input, but change it to AV, hit teletext, and there you go. Sport, regional news. I don't actually know how this works. I'm assuming they've, they're basically just pulling it from the BBC websites and creating the teletext formatted pages on the fly. Um, oh, look at this. Even some of them take forever. Just like the olden days. 
before the internet. Well, that page is obviously knackered. Anyway, have fun, and I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.